Today we're learning Revelation 4.11. This is a draw with me, so grab your colors and let's get started. This is part of Bible Drill Green Cycle. For more information, check out the description below. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. This verse is a reminder to praise and worship God because of who He is and what He has done. Let's worship the Lord together as we learn this verse. Let's start by writing the reference at the top of the page. Revelation is abbreviated R-E-V period, chapter 4, colon, verse 11. That's what we're learning today. This is a long one, so stick with me. We're going to get this by our pictures. We're going to learn it. All right. Let's read the first line. Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord. When someone is worthy, they've done something great that deserves something, uh, usually something very big. And a worthy cause is a good cause because they're doing something that's uh, deserving attention and respect and all the things. Like when there's an athlete and they win, they're worthy of celebration because they celebrated their victory. All right. So I'm thinking of like an award platform and like a number one space. So um, an award platform is usually three levels, first, second and third place. And I'm gonna make that box right up here. Third place is lower, first place is the highest, and second place is somewhere in between. Okay, then I'm gonna kinda of color that in a little bit. Um, and when I think of worthy, I think of celebration because um, whatever is worthy has done something great, so we're gonna celebrate it. Um, and usually when we're talking about God, we're talking about how he's worthy of praise, although we're going to talk about all the different things that God is worthy of in this verse. Okay, so with celebration, I think of fireworks. Don't you love fireworks? I love fireworks. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of different colors here, and uh, we're just going to kind of make ourselves some fireworks. Um, what are some things that you consider to be worthy? Write it down in the comments. What do you think is worthy? What um, are some examples of someone who is worthy, something that is worthy, and worthy of what? Are they worthy of celebrating? Are they worthy of um, imitating? Are they worthy of um, your support? What are they worthy of? And I'm excited to look and see in this verse some of the things that God is worthy of. All right, so here we go. Oh, I forgot. Not... Um, it's not just worthy, but we're also addressing God himself. So this is kind of like a prayer. So I'm going to draw some hands praying. Um, I'm, I think I'm just going to stick with this orange color today. Sometimes I like the browns. You can pick whatever color you like. Um, let's see, some praying hands. We're going to keep it real, real simple. So we're going to go up and down and around for one hand. And then it kind of meets here and comes around and down the other way. Then I'm going to kind of draw my thumbs in here. Whoops. Oh, well, that's all right. All right, so this is, um, I got my hands backwards, but this is kind of what we're going for is this kind of look. All right, um, then I'm gonna color it in and I wanna do it with a lighter color. So I'm gonna get out my crayons here um, and we're gonna color in the hands. I picked a little too dark a color. You can't really see the thumb detail, but that's all right. All right, then you need some cuffs. Um, I'm wearing short sleeves today, but if I had on cuffs, um, that would be the end of my sleeve that's right here. Um, and that's easier to draw than transitioning to a wrist and a hand. So we're just gonna draw a couple of cuffs here. Here's one cuff and color it in. There's a little divot in there, that's okay. And two cuffs, there we go. And it's all right if they're bigger than the hands. Often I like my sleeves bigger than my hands. Um, I just find that comfortable. Let's see, so we're talking about God. Oh, I meant to tell you, if you want to switch this order, um, some translations have worthy first and then addressing God and some translations have it the other way around. So you can flip it if it makes more sense to you to do it the other way around and put the worthy over here and the praying hands over here. You can switch that, that's okay. All right, so let me see. Let's read what we've got so far and we'll look at the next phrase. Here we go. Revelation 4.11, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. Hmm. When I think of glory, I think of like a glorious sunrise or a glorious sunset. Um, and often when um, they're talking about God's glory, it has to do with light. So I think what I'm gonna do is draw some clouds and then a sun shining gloriously behind it for glory. 
So for a cloud, it's pretty simple. You just kind of do your little squiggly things, give it a little bit of body, and you're done. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it looks great or not so great, it works. You know where it is. Okay, then we have to do our glory shining out from it like light. So I'm gonna draw a whole bunch of sunbeams coming out. I should have wrapped further around the cloud. I think I'm gonna do that. So it kind of goes all the way around like the sun is peeking out from behind the cloud. In fact, I might kind of draw a little bit more of a circle here to be the sun itself. All right, so there's our glory. And it's interesting, I was reading not that long ago about Moses and how um, he went up and um, saw God's glory and he came back and his face was shining because he saw God's glory. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so we have glory. Honor, um, honor is like great respect. Um, it's great respect is honoring somebody. Um, and not just saying you respect them, but actually acting like you respect them and honoring them. Um, and so when I think of that, um, it's kind of hard to put into pictures. So how about we do a wow face? Because we honor them, we respect them so much, it's a wow. All right, so let's draw a wow face. So here we go, a big circle, or oval, I should say, for the face. Big mouth going wow. And some big eyes, because they're just amazed. And I'm even gonna put little eyebrows around the um, edges to show that wow, he's just amazed. All right, so there we go. Let's do our so far, and we'll add something else. Here we go. Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. When I think of power, I think of a strong man or a strong woman, someone with strength. All right, so let's get out. I think this time I'm going to use brown. And we're going to draw some big muscles. All right, so here we go. This is just a bunch of circles and ovals that we're going to put together. So... The, the fist is a kind of this kind of oval. Then we have the forearm, which is a kind of narrow oval, but it still has a little bulk to it. Then the bicep, we want the bicep to be really big. So this oval is gonna be really big. Oops, I want it bigger than that. There we go, that's a big bicep. Okay, bicep is this part of your arm. And then um, I'm gonna give him a little, oh, he's got a pretty cute elbow, but I'm gonna connect the two with a bit of an elbow. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. So strong. Oh, power strong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Uh, Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. Well, when I think of creation, it includes everything, the entire universe, um, the big vastness of space and all the things in the universe, as well as the earth and everything in it, all the way down to the little minuscule, uh, tiny little bugs, little gnats and things that drive me crazy, as well as all the cells that make up all organisms. I mean, everything, everything, including like things you can't touch and see, like the laws of gravity and things like that. God created all of that. We're not going to draw all of that. <laughs> Let's draw instead <laughs> um, a globe. And uh, then we'll put maybe the sun and moon to remind us it's more than just the earth. It's the entire universe. Okay. So I'm going to draw um, really skinny here. I'm going to draw it with my green, kind of the outline of the earth. That'll work. It's not perfect, but it'll do. And let me see. I'm going to do, I think, um, I'm going to do Africa here. Kind of looks like that. Um, and then... Europe kind of comes down this way and Italy and Greece and then the Middle East and then over here to Asia and then Europe comes up here and we've got that up there and then little islands over here. Um, then we've got Greenland coming down and over here is North America, a little bit of Florida, South America. Oops, I went outside my circle. That's all right. I'll make it bigger. All right, now I'm going to color in all the land things. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of make it iffy. As long as you know what it is, it works. <laughs> okay? So, there we go. going to color in all our land areas here. What is your favorite part of creation? Um, we like to play the game in our house. Where would you like to go see um, in, in the world of God's creation? Um, and so if you were to go travel somewhere in God's creation, where would you like to go travel and go see of God's creation? I would love to see so much of it. We will see how far I get. 
<laughs> okay, let me see. Then we need to color in the rest of the water. And here's where I want to fix my little mistake of going outside the lines. My blue is darker than the green, so it's going to kind of cover things up, so i got to be careful around these close lines. That's another question. Um, people sometimes like the mountains better or they like the oceans better. Which do you like better, the mountains or the oceans? I like them both. I'm happy in the mountains and I'm happy around the water, whether it be oceans or rivers or creeks or whatever. Um, I also really like the open plains where I live with the fields right now. The wheat is coming up in the fields. It's beautiful to see. It's a good reminder of how God cares for us and he takes care of even the little details. Um, and you know, when you live in farm country like I do, the rain is really important. So the blessing of God's provision through the rain. Um, and it's interesting because in scripture, the rain sometimes is a sign of God's blessing and sometimes it's a sign of God's judgment, depending on if there is no rain or if there's too much rain like a flood. But I like to think of it most of the time as God's blessing. Okay, so, oh, I forgot the sun and moon. Okay, sun and moon, we're gonna do over here the sun, just cause the sun's on this side of my piece of paper. Oops, that looks a little weird. Okay, that works. Like I said, if you know what it is, it works. <laughs> then we're gonna do the moon, just a little crescent here. And then I'm gonna put some stars around it just because. Oops, I usually do that. I end up putting some stars in the black part of the moon, the dark part of the moon, and that's not how it works, but that's okay. Like I said, I know what it is. Okay, let's read what we've got so far, and we'll go on to the next phrase. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they, they are and were created. Revelation 4.11 when I think of God's will and God's pleasure, I think of the days of creation and, and in Genesis 1, it every time it says, and God saw that it was good. When I think something is good, I find myself smiling. Okay, so God's will and his pleasure, we're gonna make a smile, all right? So um, grab one of your colors and uh, we're gonna just do a really big smile. I like to add dimples. And then just so I know that it's a smile, I'm gonna add a little button nose and some happy eyes. <laughs> That's funny, it looks like the arm is his hair. That's not what I meant to do, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay, when now that they exist and they are, we can see them. So let's do some eyes to know that they are there so we can see them because they are there, okay? So let's get out one of our browns and we're gonna do some um, big eyes so that we can see. In fact, I think I'm going to put some glasses on my guy. Maybe it'll be a girl. I haven't decided yet. But I'm going to put some glasses on him. So I'm going to do a little bridge here and some circles for the glasses. There, that's good. And then some little things to go over the ears like that. Okay, then um, get back my brown. I'm going to do some eyelids and color that in. Okay, then we need some pupils and some irises. That's the colory part. Let's see, I think we're going to do some brown eyes. So I'm going to get a darker brown and do the irises here. Nice thing is black is even darker than this dark brown, so I can just color in my circles here and then add the pupil in black. There we go. I don't know if you can see that on the video. It's kind of hard to see here, but I like it. Um, and let me see. I'm going to add a little smile here on this guy too. Oops, wrong one. I want kind of a brownish red, I think. I'll try this one. Just a little smile this time. Okay, so let's do the whole thing. We're almost done. Let's do what we've got so far. Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelation 4.11. 
Now we're gonna do something really fancy for this um, work created bit because I always think of that passage in Jeremiah where he goes and he watches the potter pulling the clay and making a clay pot and then it gets messed up so the potter um, turns it into something else and, and makes it the way he wants it. And God says, I created you and I can form you and shape you the way I want you to. I think that's really cool. So to help us remember God made, God created everything. We're gonna do a potter and some clay. It's gonna be a little tricky, but I think we can do it. So let's get out some hands. I'm gonna do a pink this time because it, it'll contrast with the gray clay. And uh, so we're gonna do kind of this and around like this because the hands are going to go around the clay pot like that kind of um, and I'm not going to worry about more of it right now I'm going to go to the um, get my gray for the clay and I'm going to start with a really light gray so that I can layer in more colors we're going to start with the top the lip of it there and then it's going to kind of come down around the fingers and then the pot imagining is going like this. So we're going to kind of draw it underneath there. And what I do is I just take my marker and go where I think it should be. And then I put my marker down where it's supposed to go down. But if that's tricky, you use a light pencil and you can erase the pencil marks later. Okay. So we have our clay here. And then um, they spin clay on a wheel. So I'm going to draw a wheel around here. And that's um, where the clay is being worked. Okay, now I, I'm going to get out my um, crayons here to add a little detail to it because the, the potter's wheel is always messy. So we're going to add a little messiness here. And the inside is still clay, so I'm going to do some darker crayon in there so that you still see the opening of the lip. At least I can. Um, and I might add some um, darker bits around here to kind of make it a little more messy. There, that looks good. All right, then I'm going to use my um, marker, or crayons, I mean, to uh, color in my hands, too. But you could use your marker, and that would work, too. Now, this isn't super detailed, but it's enough to remind us what it is. It's a potter working a wheel. I'm going to add a little brown in there, because that looks really big. Um, so I'm going to add a little more brown in here. And um, so as... You know, life doesn't always turn out the way we want it to, and that's okay. What we do is we look for what God is trying to teach us in those seasons and what he wants us to do moving forward. Um, and that's what that potter and the clay analogy really is all about. It's about, you know, God has a plan for you, and it could be different than what your plan is. But because God made us, he knows what is best for us because he made us. He knows us inside out. So... He created us. That's what we're going to remember. Okay. Whew. You ready? We're going to do the whole thing. I think you can do it. And when we're all done saying it together, then you write it out here in the blank spaces and then your picture is finished. All right, here we go. Revelation 411. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelation 4.11. Don't forget to subscribe. We post memory verses in four translations, key passages, answers to Bible questions, and more. Check out our store and freebies at parentroadmin.com. We love you, friends. See you next time.